Roll for Random Encounter. Welcome to the Random Encounter Show. I'm Dev Stalker 5. Uh, sort of a fun thing to join you with today. Uh, our first segment into classic American video gaming and computers and consoles and different things. And not necessarily a, how I wanted to start the series off of coverage of those subjects, but uh, I got a little surprise in today uh, via the mail system. And that's a package from Atari Age. Uh, two things I ordered a while back, they're showing up here. And uh, I figured it'd be fun to open them up here on uh, camera, take a look at what we got, and uh, we'll, we'll try to fine tune the uh, video capture device I have. I play on actual hardware. You know, that's something I, I'm, I'm not big on emulation. I do have some emulation devices, but for the classic gaming, is I've always enjoyed it on original hardware with original controllers and stuff. But, uh, yeah, let's take a look and see what we got here. Oh, uh, guest star today, a friend of mine since high school. His name is Lucky. He's, uh, he's been with me and a reliable friend for many, many years. So without further ado... Here's Lucky, <laughs> our nifty package opening device. I'm sure anybody that watched the original Deathstalker 5 channel got a chuckle. <laughs> but let's open this puppy up and see what we got. Might need to sharpen Lucky at some point. I don't know. But he's not going to let us down today. Al at Atari Age, he, uh, he packages his uh, games up very well when he sends, sends them to you. So let's dig in here. All right, we got a box of nothing but peanuts. Foam peanuts. Wow. <laughs> let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Let's set everything out of the box here. Oh. My wife will be happy. There's foam peanuts going everywhere. Ah. Okie dokie. <laughs> now that we've made a mess out of everything, let's uh, let's open them up here so we can actually see the games. They're always uh, packaged in a Nice plastic sleeve. And out they come. And, oh yeah. Clean up the mess. One more thing to take a gander at we need to open. And that would be some game manuals. Promotional materials, which were all, always awesome. You know, Atari Age, they uh, they go all out. Al, the guy who owns it, he goes all out for this. It's just fantastic. So, uh, let's start off with the games. Uh, these two games, uh, I chose them from the Atari Age store because they're, uh, I have two really favorite genres. And that is just classic shooters. You know, people call them shoot 'em ups nowadays or schmups. And <laughs> I'm not one of them. They'll, they're shooters. You know, we're talking Galaga. We're talking, you know, Gorf, those type of games. They, they're space invaders. They're shooters. You know, but my other favorite console or uh, type of game for classic gaming is. The old school dungeon crawlers RPG uh, adventure type games. Uh, so, and that's what we got today. They they fit right into that dungeon crawling theme, that that adventure role playing style theme. And the original Atari Twenty Six Hundred had very few of those type games. Uh, they're a true, you know, dungeon crawler type of RPG games. Adventure was awesome, but that doesn't really count. But you had uh, Crips of Chaos from Fox 21st Century. It was literally a, an attempt at a first-person uh, role-playing game 
on the Atari 2600. And then you had Dragon Stomper, which was a full-fledged RPG game. And I believe the first to ever come to a home console. And that was on the Supercharger, which was a cassette reading attachment for the 2600 itself. But let's take a look. Our first game up, Deep Stone Caverns. I'm not sure if the light's very good for that. We'll, uh, get, get, we'll get a better image up than that probably. And our other game is Anguna. So, two old school dungeon crawlers. Uh, very reminiscent of the original Zelda games in ways. The Legend of Zelda for the NES. Uh, the promotional stuff we got, we got a neat neat dungeon crawling fun for the whole family hey i'm in we got a neat insert for that uh of course we got uh you know ads for other games some of which we have uh i've been a fan of atari age for a few years now so i have quite a stack of atari age homebrew game uh oh, excuse me homebrew games and uh that's the neat thing about atari age is these are Modern makes for the Atari 2600, Atari 7800, ColecoVision, and Television. Uh, you know, Atari Age publishes on most all of the classic platforms, including the Atari 8-bit computers, the Atari Jaguar. I mean, they they they're doing it all. If it, if it had an Atari on it or it was a classic console, they're they're they've got people programming and messing with it. And Atari Age is a publisher, so. It's just a great place to go to look for new games that are in the classic style of gaming, you know, and that work on these classic consoles. So a lot of fun, but we got the manual for Deep Stone Catacombs. Let's see what we got here. Very beautiful, as always, just beautiful, you know, colored uh, manuals for the games. Uh... But let's see, sort of instructions for the games. Uh, far below the surface, the evil Dark Lord Krom, his army of undead soldiers and three ferocious dragons guard an unimaginable lot of treasure. They stood undisturbed for a millennia until the band of ten foolish thieves attempted to pillage the depths below. They did not make it far, however. Only one was able to escape alive. In anger, Krom attacked the kingdom of Tradon. He recklessly set flame to everything in his path, kidnapped Princess Robin, and caged her 26 floors down into the dark underworld of the catacomb. The princess is now in great danger. Her only hope is someone skilled enough to come to her rescue. This is your chance to prove yourself. You must do what it takes to defeat the Dark Lord. So, yeah. You know, very reminiscent of... The Legend of Zelda story with Anguna. You know, this one this one was mostly, from what I could tell, inside of a dungeon. You go down into the catacombs and explore and find things and defeat enemies. This one was uh this one was a little more interesting to me because it had not just a you know single dungeon, it seemed, it had like an overworld. You know, where you could go outside, there was trees and things. So let's see what we got. You have been captured by monsters. Again? Yes, again. How does this keep happening to you? This time you were on a mission to kill the evil Goblin King, the latest monster to terrorize the land. But as usual, somehow, you got yourself caught by his henchmen. Luckily, the monsters aren't any smarter this time around. Someday it might occur to them to take your sword away. Now you must battle your way out of the prison dungeon. Navigate your way through the land and find and defeat the Goblin King. Good luck. Again, Atari 2600 game. Uh, all this sounds just fantastic. So why don't we go over to my uh, small gaming corner. <laughs> and I've uh, you know set up the Atari 7800 Pro System. Pop these 2600 games in and see what they're about. Okay, Deepstone Catacombs, heading down into the dungeon. We definitely want game one. So let's head down and see what it's all about. Okay, our first room here. Nothing going on. We got a sword. So in this game, you can, you have three things you can do. You can walk, run, or use your weapon. 
Down goes our first scorpion. Let's run over here. Two scorpions. All right. Well, he got me a little bit. There they go. And then the, I guess the treasure pops up once you clear each room. Yes, that definitely seems to be the MO here. So room clearing is our game. Uh, briefly looked at the instruction manual. There's quite a few different enemies and treasures to find. Uh, mostly gold coins, it seems. That's all we've got so far. But also, there's uh, mushrooms that give you an extra life and uh, items that, that add life to your current life and different things. So let's, let's pop through here. Really fast playing game. I'm enjoying this so far. Okay, that's our ladder down to go deeper. Let's look over here. Normally, these type of rooms that are additional that you don't have to go in pop up some kind of new treasure and uh, just gold coins, but hey, we'll take them. Heading to our next level. Okay, trap room. And uh, Yar's Revenge Trap. I don't know. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Let's avoid the trap here as best we can. There we go. The blue scorpions, I think the red scorpions sort of move on their own, and the blue scorpions track your character. Okay, there's our mushroom, and if you looked at the lower left, it added a red, another red square. That's our life. Let's head down. Okay, what do we got? Okay, some ghosts. A little tougher to kill than the scorpions. And another skull oh, trap room. I died. Let's give it another go here. Blue scorpion down. And a trap room. Let's do this quickly. All right. Die, you ghost. Die. So this is the second level of the dungeons. Definitely full of ghosts. Okay, got another life. That's good. Which way? Oh, there's our way down. Let's go. And up we go. Empty room. Trap room and... Oh, no. Oh, no. I think this is a boss. <laughs> terrible. Okay, it's down. Good. Well, that was quick. Down we go. And another trap room. What the heck is that? I think in the manual it was an ogre. And they throw rocks or something? I don't know. It looked like a ninja turtle. I'm going with ninja turtles. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Dungeon Turtles. There we go. <laughs> oh, they're giving me some damage there. Oh, Oh, I died again. Okay, guys, let's go look at Aguna. This was fun. I want to go see a, uh, Anguna as well. Okay, fired it up. Nice little opening screen here. Starter password, so you can save your game with passwords. Here we go. Let's see the controls. Walk around. Okay, same MO with a sword. I'm not sure what these enemies are. They seem to be sick Pac-Men. If you push select on your 7800, just like then, or your black and white switch, you get a menu that gives you your level, experience, uh, a map, overworld map of where you currently are and different things. Fun, but these sick Pac-Man gotta go. Oh, there's the real Pac-Man, and he's shooting things. <laughs> die, Pac-Man, die. <laughs> and more Pac-Men, green Pac-Men, that are really fast. Okay, oh, oh, oh. Come on. There we go. A key. Now we just got to find a door to use that key. Yep. Up oh, there's the sick Pac-Man. Oh, he's sick. Oh, and he gave us a turkey leg. I wonder why Pac-Man had a turkey leg. I don't know. It gave us some more life. Kill these other sick Pac-Men. More Pac-Men. It's just multiplying. Uh, maybe the designer just really hated Pac-Man. I don't know. This is... <laughs> I'm not sure what these are supposed to be. Goblins, I guess. I don't know. Okay, there's the locked door. What the heck is this? Another ninja turtle? <laughs> no. A dinosaur? Maybe it's a goblin. I don't know, but it's kicking my butt. Oh, but it had a turkey leg. A goblin leg. Wonder... Oh, the levels reset when you go back into them. Okay. I noticed on Deep Stone, I don't think they reset. But that's okay. That's the norm that they reset. That's a good way to farm experience, I guess. I got some bats. And on where we go to another sick Pac-Man. Die, Pac-Man, die. More bats that are killing me. 
Uh, if you notice, I got a loft bar in the top left corner of the screen. We'll grab this bat leg. Hmm, bat leg. So I haven't leveled up yet. But yeah, lots of bats. What what dungeon or cave system would be? Oh no. I don't know what this dinosaur goblin thing is. I don't know, but it, they're horrible. <laughs> I want you die. All right. A dinosaur leg. Lots of dinosaur legs and bat legs and turkey legs in this game. Pac-Man legs. Even though Pac-Man doesn't have any legs. Uh, maybe that was one of the things that he had eaten previously. His legs. You know. You, you, you cut him open and his previous victims spit, spill out from his stomach intestinal tract. <laughs> but anyway, we got a bow. Uh, let's test the bow out. Boom! Okay, so basically, it shoots your sword like the Legend of Zelda games. Uh, but, you know, I can go for imagination here. It's a bow. It's amazing sometimes what they can pull off on a one button system. The Atari 2600 utilized one button on a normal controller. Some specialty controllers were made. But by holding down the button, you can shoot your bow and arrows. Your arrows are at your top right corner of your screen. I don't know who kept all these sick Pac Man in this dungeon. I feel sort of bad for them. I'm just putting them out of their misery. What's this? I believe that's the new sword. Yes, there's a two by the sword now. I still have a level one shield. Okie dokie. Let's put these Pac-Man out of their misery. If I see one with a bow on its head, I quit. <laughs> I can't do it to miss Pac-Man. Where's the chivalry in that? Okay, I'm going to just avoid... Uh-oh, boss battle. Giant turtle. Giant dragon. I don't know. Shooting stuff. We got this, guys. Oh, yeah. Give me some arrows. Let's see where we go. Oh, to the outside world. There's some trees and green grass. And there, what the heck is this? A monkey? I don't know. Now you can see ourselves on the map. Let's. Okay, can't go this way. Can't go that way. Well, hope we can go this way. There we go. Oh, the Pac-Man are even in the other world. <laughs> And more, I'm guessing those are monkeys. I don't know. We went from killing bats and Pac-Men and turtles to killing monkeys. This is not a PETA-approved game. <laughs> oh, right, a monkey leg. Mmm. <laughs> okay, monkeys everywhere. I don't like these monkeys. They're not really mean. But if you touch them, they hurt. Might as well kill them here and see if they give us anything. Some fruits on this tree, or maybe another monkey leg. Oh, nope. Ah, it reset on me. Okay, a river. With some birds, and there we are on the map. Let's continue up. Oh, oh, oh. Those are the snakes from the Smurf game, rescued from Gargamel's castle. And there's a river here, too, that makes sense. Ah, yes, it makes sense. More monkeys. Yeah, too bad we don't have our Smurf character. We could jump over that river, no problem. But it won't allow our... What the heck? Uh, Huge walking stick. Your guess is as good as mine. It's walking stick is shooting sticks. <laughs> so I wonder what we get if we kill this thing. The giant walking stick of death. Ouch. Okay, it's not friendly. I wouldn't assume if I came in, you know, in real life that there was a giant walking stick. Throwing sticks. I wouldn't assume that it would be friendly. More Smurf snakes. There's three of them. Let's just avoid those. Okay, what the heck are these? Look at the, look at the enemy variety here. All right, a castle. Did we win the game already? Surely not. Oh, dragon. And, uh, oh. Yeah, I'm out of arrows. Ouch. Okay, we're probably going to die here. Let's see if we can come up with a strategy. Come over here. Stab him. Got some arrows. Go through the door. Locked door. Okay. Uh, Pretty cool. I'm, I'm really digging this game as well. It's uh definitely reminiscent of The Legend of Zelda from the NES. But let's head back over to the table and have a little final discussion. And uh, 
get out of this video. Wake up. And okay, back on the table. Guys, for a first look, these games were pretty exciting in my book. You know, I have to say, uh, Deep Stone Catacombs seems to be just uh, just a fantastic arcade style dungeon crawler. Uh, you know, the enemy variation right off the bat was fun. The, uh, the maze type and mechanics, you know, where there was levers and, and doors and stuff. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to dig deeper into Deep Stone Catacombs. And Guna, this is something special. You know, there's a lot more involved here with role-play and game mechanics. You know, you've got experience. You've got different weapons and items you can find. You puzzles and keys. Uh, it, it was just throwing, you know, basically uh, a true 8-bit early RPG experience your way. With an arcadey feel, you know, this was an action adventure game instead of turn based, which are normally my favorite. Turn based are okay, uh, more strategy involved, slower pace, but I really like this arcade feel to it, to both these games. So I can't wait, you know, to really dig into these, finish the stories out, see what happens toward the end. And Atari Age is just killing it, and it's killing me. You know, they've got too too many great games out there in the classic shooter category. And this adventure action style RPG dungeon crawler style games. They've just got too much out there. You know, it's not enough that tabletop hobbies is, is, is expensive. Especially if you like the older, more classic stuff like me. And you want to go in and find that stuff and, and mess around with it nowadays. But uh, the... Classic American video game scene, or just the classic scene. I don't call it the retro scene. I, I you know, that normally pertains more to uh, Nintendo and Sega and the Turbo Graphics PC Engine type stuff and whatnot. So I consider this really the classic age, and it's definitely more affordable to actually collect and play on original hardware. But uh, in most instances, it can get up there, but it's definitely not cheap either. You know, so having both these hobbies combined, it's it's no wonder I stay broke. <laughs> I tell everybody I can't even afford a haircut. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, just fantastic games. And Atari Age, you know, I've always I've I've got a stack of those games, and it's uh, always a good experience buying from Atari Age, either on eBay or through their website. And uh, only once did I ever have a problem with the game they sent, and it was they quickly sh shot me a label over and uh, told me to, uh, you know, that they were uh, they would replace it free of charge, and and they did it very quickly. You know, about the time that I, you know, two or three days passed around, the game showed up. You know, so it was uh, so that was the only problem I ever had, which really wasn't a problem. You know, it was just uh, an error in the when they flashed a ROM, I guess, to the cart. Who knows? But they fixed it immediately, no questions asked. But, yeah, just overall can't beat them. So I can definitely recommend that if you like the classic video game and scene, uh, especially with Atari consoles, but like I said, they branch off over into computer systems, especially the Ataris and other, uh, the Jaguar, Atari, I think they have Lynx, but they do ColecoVision and Intellivision and stuff as well. So you never know. Go over to their website and check it out if, if you've never done so when you're into the classic video gaming scene and talking about that scene i definitely want to come back and we're going to make some videos introduce uh some of the consoles that we have uh some of the libraries that we have and i think to show you know the, the my setup for playing these games you know it's on an original crt tv uh my capture card you know it, it's set up for modern game consoles or modern video sources so it throws the colors off the images are never as sharp, uh, they're never as crisp, and the flicker goes all kind of crazy because Atari 2600 games and most all older consoles, uh, they utilize flicker on the screen to display more items on the screen or what have you, and you really don't see it if you're playing on the TV screen. So maybe I can figure a better setup of using my camera in some, you know, some mode or whatever so you don't see the CRT TV flicker. And you get a better idea of the game. You know, it's like it's like how we used to do it. You invited your friends over. They invited you over. And it's like, check out these new games. And you sit down beside them in front of the TV on the couch or whatever. And they popped in the new games. And they showed you. 
you know, and you got to see it in person. And if you were lucky, maybe they passed you con the controller and let you play a little bit as well. But that's how we used to, you know, especially as when I was a kid, is if you wanted to see a new video game, that was the way to do it. You know, let your buddy get it, see him play it a little bit, you try it out, then you knew if it was something that you would want as well. But, uh, yeah, if you're into the classic scene, you know, leave a comment below of your favorite consoles or your favorite games or whatever, and I will be glad to take a look at, at what you have to say. And if I have them or whatever, we can definitely get them on the show, talk about them. If I don't have them, I might use it for a recommendation list to, uh, you know, go, go out and find a copy of or something. But regardless, it's a surprise package, uh, sort of, because it wasn't supposed to arrive for a few more days, according to the UPS, USPS tracking. So sort of a surprise package on the rainy day here. And uh, I just wanted to open it up and have fun and show you guys. Anyways... I'll be seeing you next time here on the Random Encounter Show. Hey, this is Dev Stalker 5. If you like the Random Encounter Show, make sure you're subscribed to our channel so that you'll be the first to know when we upload a new episode. Want to support the show? Head over to Questing Table Studio on Facebook. Let us help you bring your table to life with miniature painting services and terrain.